Welcome to the podcast. My name is Father Bill W., and I am an Episcopal priest uh, in long-term recovery, living here in Austin, Texas, and I've had the gift of sobriety since December the 27th of 1972 through the program of Alcoholics Anonymous and with, uh, as the song goes, a lot of help from my friends. Uh, just a couple of uh, short pieces of business before we uh, jump into the episode. Um, uh, first thing is, if you have not done so already, I would encourage you to go visit our website. It's titled Two Way Prayer, T W O, and uh, it's about the form of prayer that they did in the Oxford group and was carried over by some into early AA. I think it's a real life changer, and um, encourage you to to visit there and 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 even more so to to begin the practice. And while you're on the website, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. I try to get one of those out every uh, month to six weeks. And uh, we're doing a series in, in the newsletter, actually going through the, the five C's uh, from the Oxford group. So uh, I think you may find that of interest. Also, secondly, I um, want to invite you to our next workshop. It is on Saturday, November the 6th from 10 to 1230 p.m. Central Time. And it's on the history of the 12 steps. I'm trying to go through each one of the st steps from kind of an historical perspective and uh, see if we can't learn something uh, from the history. Uh, you can get that information again on the website or you can write me and I'll be happy to send you a flyer. You can get in touch with me at twowayprayer at gmail.com. And finally, I do wanna uh, thank our supporters who uh, make all of this possible. And if you uh, can join in helping us, uh, a gift is sincerely appreciated. Once again, go to the website to donate or there will be a link uh, at the end of this podcast. So the business is out of the way. And my guest for this series is Matt D from upstate New York. And Matt is an old, old friend uh, and perhaps the most knowledgeable man I know on the subject of Thomas E. Powers. And Tom played a really important role in the history and in the evolution of AA. Tom helped Bill Wilson to write 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. <clears throat> helped him in writing AA Comes of Age, as well as the second edition of the big book. Bill Wilson was Tom's mentor, friend, and sponsor. But uh, Tom also wrote a book on his own. And he, was, he was a really gifted writer uh, and, and prolific writer as well. <clears throat> but the book that we're looking at is titled Invitation to a Great Experiment. And that is the book that we're going to be focused on throughout uh, this series. So if you want to get a copy of that, there will be a link uh, to purchasing it in the show notes. Uh, I, I would encourage you to go that way rather than trying to buy it on the open market because it is out of print and some of the prices out there are exorbitant. So um, welcome, Matt. It is, uh, it is good to have you back. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, an another great uh, session of sharing. Uh, you survived honored, the last Honored one? to be here. Yeah, you survived, survived the last one. <laughs> All right, yeah. good. Uh, so in, in the last episode, um, you shared some background regarding Tom and his relationship with Bill Wilson. So I don't, I don't think we need to go through all of that again. Uh, but I would like to get started kind of digging into uh, Tom's book and start with the three major questions that he says he's going to set out to answer. And so we'll kind of start with the, the first one. Is Great. God... Yeah, is God an experientially knowable reality? And Tom starts off with a warning. He says, uh, if you're in a crisis or an emergency, you can satisfy yourself of God's reality uh, in four pretty simple steps. Uh, these, are, these are some things that he encourages uh, newcomers to do. And the first one, and we'll, we'll go through these four uh, together, Matt, and just jump in at the end and uh, kind of comment on it, I think would be a great. great way to go, right? So the first one is avoid like plague, all unnecessary arguments and debate. Accept God as a working hypothesis. Kind of sounds like step two to me. It sure does. Yeah. I mean, this is an essential thing. Uh, you know, when you first... Uh, get in the program. I mean, there's so many ways that you hear it about, you know, where people are, are advising others just to 
really have an op open mind uh, to the program itself. Uh, and, and in essence, we talked about this the, the last time around about loss of, you start with the condition of loss of, of faith in yourself. Uh, if, if you come at it there and you're always aided by whatever the level of crisis that helped you come to the program, uh, right. depending on the severity of it. But if you, if you come in in that way with your hat in your hand, um, you'll be more inclined at, at this very first step to not debate and to not argue. You'll know that you're in a condition. Uh, you know, if you're a half dead person, you don't want to mess around in the hospital with the doctor's advice. You, you, you do exactly what he says to do and you don't question uh, him in any way. And this is an essential thing for anybody in the spiritual life and also, of course, in the program life, the 12 step life. Right. Yeah, it's the gift of desperation. Uh, the stronger it is, the, in, in some ways, the better off you are. And uh, we're going we're gonna to get into that. But initially, it is, it is to approach this, this search for God, this reality of God's existence in terms of an experiment. And I don't know that we stress that enough today, but it's the key point in his book. And, and uh, as I read the history, um, the way Dr. Bob brought people into, uh, into recovery when, when they were in the hospital, it was exactly that, you know, yeah. we're, we're going to start with a hypothesis. God yeah. could, yeah, could be, could be, eh? You know, if you say no, we, we can't go much further, but yeah. could be could be is different. Uh, I thought, you know, it was like I had to define God. Uh, yeah. And that was not helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Could be is the crack in the armor. You know, it's just right. very possibly, you know, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And, and you better hope to hell there is. <laughs> yeah. Because you're in trouble. Yeah. So so that's the enter, entering in the laboratory. It took me back to kind of high school. You know, you, you'd, you'd learn about chemistry in the, in the classroom, but then you'd go to the lab and that's where you'd see it come alive. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. where he's leading us uh, in this. And the second thing he says is find a group, find a group of people who really believe in God. And, and then he adds, who are also living the life and not just talking about it. Uh, that's an important piece of uh, initial advice as well, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I, I remember him saying in one of, his, uh, one of his AA talks, you know, we use this phrase in AA all the time about uh, one drunk talking to another. Right. Uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that one drunk is talking to another every single night in every bar in every town <laughs> throughout the entire country. Yeah. What he means by one, one, one drunk talking to another, it's about the principles in which they're talking about, you know, and that's an important thing to remember because unfortunately you can be part of uh, an association of people and um, the principles are no longer a part of it. It really just becomes, uh, I don't know, an auxiliary bowling club or, you know, it's the Kiwanis or the Elks or something. It's no longer about right. life change, you know. So you really want to, your life is dependent on associating with people who are really serious about the pursuit of God, who are, who are really open to the possibility of not just the could be, but also uh, are really trying to work it in their daily life and not just talk. Yeah, and you have to be selective. Uh, so, so um, man, I mean, just just to go to a meeting uh, is not necessarily uh, going to be your answer. You have yeah. to go to a meeting with people who, as he says, it are really working this thing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I also think my story and yours, I think we've got, if you don't mind me speaking Not at all. on your, <laughs> but we've got these things where, where both of us have been around the program for a while and um, got to a place where uh, mine's a little different because I had, had gone back out and was in trouble again with drinking. Yours was uh, where you had gone stagnant at a certain point, but at, at some place you became 
you know, it, well, your story is you bumped into Earl H and you learned about, you know, the some of the original practice. But I wonder if, you know, when when you come up to meeting an Earl H or somebody in this program uh, where you're going to learn something new, you're really going to dive in and not just be on the surface, right. that there's a condition, there's a condition in which you were open to it, you know, and that's essential. That's an essential, essential ingredient here. Right. You really got to be open to it. Yeah, I, I had an experience when I was first in the program. I used to read the big book and I would immediately go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? It, it, it took me some years to find out what the heck was going on there. But it's like my ego would shut down. This is too threatening. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom, <laughs> said, Tom, you know, Tom used to say, he said, uh, if you if you read a book, and you and you stopped at a certain place. Yeah, he'd say, "Go back and open it up where you left off, and ask yourself, what were you offended by?" Right, right. <laughs> That's <hard>. right. <laughs> <laughs> this is insulting. <laughs> <laughs> you don't realize it, but the, but the reaction to it is 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 something like that. Either you just you just uh, you feel like you it petered out and you close the thing or you're excessively tired. But the fact of the matter is, is the ego has had enough of that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jung said that uh, Sigmund Freud uh, passed out twice that, the, that he was aware of. And in both cases, it was when his immortality felt threatened. <laughs> uh. I would have guessed it was after a cocaine binge, but that's a. Well, I didn't story count though. Didn't, didn't count though. So that's uh, that's just. Part of the, uh, uh, Tom had a great sense of humor too, uh, of course, uh, and and he, and he starts off at this this next section saying, you know, now if you're an addict, uh, you're really way ahead of this game, and and that's yeah. uh, be, because because the desperation is there. I mean, someone who's philosophically searching for God is at a disadvantage. Alcoholics and addicts who are facing death uh, uh, really have a head start, you know? Yeah, man, you're just, and, and if you're in a serious life crisis, you better seize on that opportunity because you're going to be open in a way uh, that you usually are not. That's right. You know, he used to say about himself um, that, the, that the liar within is paralyzed and then when you start to get your health back, he said, he used to say, at the extent that my health returned, the liar revived. Now, now one of the things my, my old sponsor used to say to me was, uh, you know, norm, normal people uh, uh, have a harder time with this spirituality thing than do alcoholics and addicts, because it's like we have an anvil hanging over our heads. And I've always kept that image. It's a, and he would say, "You will get this program, or you will die." And it's that it's that 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 threat of death that that pushes us forward. And, and I, I I don't th I think you're going to have a hard time if if you can't begin to realize that that reality within yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. He he used to classify three three types of addicts. He said that they're the, the off scouring and rubbish of the earth. Those are the ones who are the, the that had really been again, stripped naked in the ego department, right. really in rough shape, shape, and really uh, the least inclined to lie to themselves about their condition. You right. know uh, the next were the do all writers. And those were people who fluctuated in between the realization of their need and and the forgetfulness of it mm -hmm. uh that category is important because anybody who comes in the program and gets their their life straightened out no matter how much sheer naked desperation they had in the beginning your life starts to re-knit things start to go and you know if if you're on this program you know you get the good job and the marriage and the different things right. and um you're going to fluctuate in between you know seeing your need and forgetting it, you know, and falling to sleep again. Right. Um, and, and then the, the last group are those who are, you know, uh, the Sanskrit word is Maya, which is not just ignorance, but it's the ignorance, just completely uh, incapable of seeing their need, you know, and, and the, the life crisis. And he talks about that in this, 
in the section about being in an emergency and uh, you know a life crisis is is really a um, an aid. Yeah, let towards, me go ahead. Let me go yeah. ahead and read that for the folks. It's 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 a sure. beautiful beautiful description. He says, in case of extreme emergency, if you're in a hospital or are otherwise restricted, if you're cut off from ordinary human contacts and maybe even from books, or if perhaps you are so ill that you have nothing to hope for in the world, your situation is particularly favorable. For great things, indeed the greatest things, are possible between the undefended human heart and God. You are, or you can be, if you choose, way ahead of most of the rest of us. You have nothing to learn from us. We could learn from you. What a turnaround. Oh my God. And it, and when, I, when I read that, it's just, uh, I don't know, so moving. You know, apparently his, his son had told me a story. They had, um, I think he had a teacher. Uh, I might have this wrong, but it was a teacher or a neighbor who was not, interested in the spiritual life at all and he had some terminal disease cancer or something this is back in the 1950s right after he had written this book mm -hmm. and um the, they went and visited him in the hospital and uh it tom actually you know i think he had he had the guy had actually picked up a copy of this book somewhere along the line and uh tom jr was just saying that the conversation this person had who was within weeks of his own uh death uh with 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 tom writing this book you know somebody who had been through Jeez. such i mean the, the hell of addiction and everything else uh you know this undefended human heart you know the, he, he just said that the the discourse between these two persons to witness it was something he'd never forget you know it and so we talked about death in our last time around and the the you know the the with the condition of the ego, you know, almost nobody goes, gets into this program unless they, they have some kind of realization of their own death right. or th they're in some very critical situation that, um, you know, that, that opens them up, uh, when you're there, I mean, all, all the, all the ego personality, all of that is just stripped beautifully away. Yeah. <laughs> That's I came in at a relatively high bottom at age 27 and uh, a therapist that I had worked with uh, sent me down to live on Skid Row for one year. That, that, that was, that was he's, the only way he thought I was going to be able to get the program to look in the eyes of every addict and alcoholic that I met and, and, and realize there, but for the grace of God goes I, and, and I did it. And I've never sent anybody else on that journey because yeah. it was tremendously dangerous, but it, yeah. it was such a gift. Yeah. Well, just think of having your face rubbed in desperation, you know, yeah. day in and day out. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Um, the third thing he says is be truthful about your situation uh, to the group. Tell them the truth and follow their reasonable suggestions. We're pretty vulnerable when we come in in a condition like that. And hopefully the people we're, we're engaged with uh, are, are gonna kind of take us under their wings and uh, nurture us. Uh, and, and we need to follow them. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I mean, I think the first, I mean, this is the first thing. Uh, I mean, when, when Bill had met Abby before there were any talk of anything else, the very first thing that was said to him. And the thing, frankly, he could not shake from his mind, which I think really led to his, his spiritual experience was you've got to be honest with mm. yourself. You know, honesty is the very first thing in this program, period. I mean, I think that the whole idea that you, that, you know, that you have to go through such hell and anguish just, just to, um, you know, get to this condition that we've been talking about here, uh, you know, last meeting and this one, right. the, the condition is, is basically called realization of need, but that's contingent on, on openness towards, you know, the truth, 
like that's why it's so useful to get this ever love and hell beat out of you because yeah. you actually are are now open to it something that you've been you know either ignorant of or running from or hiding from uh you know we talked about the um i mentioned this thing of the ego identification with with your physical body the first thing that you know in the story of of genesis the first thing they did was cover uh cover themselves and hide and this is where the the the, the beginning is is when you come out into the light for the first time mm -hmm. you know and really get honest about where you've been about your addiction you know the the things that you've done that is there is there any is there any um is a thing that C.S. Lewis said that I thought was quite interesting. If you're doing a, a math equation that consists of five problems and you get, you know, the first two right, you get the third one wrong and you get the fourth and fifth one right, you still end up with a wrong answer, you know, mm -hmm. and, and lying is where you, where you, you always, you can't progress forward. You'll always have to go back and get it right and make it right yeah. you know and that's how this thing is you can't just you know oh i'm going to be a, a spiritual guy and move on and have a new life you really got to go back to where you got this thing wrong and it always takes uh, honesty you know it I, always I, takes honesty I, I had a little fantasy when you were talking about uh, about cutting the onion you know and i, I had this image of uh, okay there's there's let's say 25 layers to the onion if, if i skip layer four and seven you know yeah. i can't get to the center yeah that's exactly right it's impossible yeah so and also the, it's it's the first it, the other thing is is that it is the, the for most people in 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 the both spiritual life but also the 12-step program life and i can i consider them one and the same for myself mm -hmm. uh this is the first attribute of god that you start to connect with you know, it's the Holy Spirit of truth, you know, and this, this, that's the very beginning. And the great thing about it, like you were saying earlier, where you, where you get, you get, you know, an addict is so cynical and you get hung up with this idea, well, if I've got to believe in God, I've got to believe in the God that I have of my own, you know, what I think he's right. like or somebody right. else's or whatever. Right. And it's too much for you. The, 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 the Holy Spirit of truth is also known as the comforter you know it's it's not a thing like i gotta theologically buy this idea it's like your life depends on you being honest and at the extent that you're being honest is the extent that you're forming a relationship with god himself and along with it which you can't see in advance because it always looks to be the opposite is you're comforted comforted by it right you know you really start to get peace yeah, uh, Tom asks a series of questions at this point in the in the chapter, and and that's the first one about getting honest. And he says, "Ask yourself, am I honest?" and and beware of a quick answer, of a quick yes, because we are all liars. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so true. Ah, I'm embarrassed. Well, I'm embarrassed to think back. <laughs> <laughs> because oh, yeah. those, those layers of lying are so yeah. deep oh yeah gosh oh yeah oh yeah it's totally ingrained in the human condition yeah I'm oh and especially sure. in my family i mean uh, uh the lies were it was a way of life oh yeah it yeah was a absolutely way of life yeah really is a way of life yeah. And wh when I first uh, got in the program, I talk about being embarrassed. You know, I I literally did not think that I was a liar. I right? Didn't oh, think I had right. a problem lying at all. <laughs> I thought you know I'm I rigorously didn't... honest because I'm going to tell you what's wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exactly right. And and uh, God, how 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 blind we are. Oh, jeez. Thinking of that line, I guess it's a psalm or something. Who art man that thou art mindful of him? I mean, we just do not know mm -hmm. ourselves at all. Yeah, let me read a, another short quote here from Tom. He says, until the problem of honesty is sincerely faced, you're not qualified even to make a start toward finding real answers to questions about God's reality and availability. 
And then he goes on to quote from the Upanishad, the Hindu scripture, writing that God is found by veracity. Falsehood turns from the way. Truth goes all the way. The way is paved with truth. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. No, it's so true. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know of any recovery that doesn't begin with honesty. That's right. That's right. Bob's began with honesty. You know, he was, he was in the Oxford group for a couple of years, attending meetings weekly, but he was not telling the truth. He was, he was not sharing with the group about his alcoholism. He was, he was afraid he was going to lose his practice. You know? So for yep. two years, he, he didn't get much out of it until he was forced. Uh, and, and, and what Henrietta Cyberling did, <laughs> it's a wonderful little story. She, she, she knew that he was stuck. And she told the group that night, everybody had to share something deep, something they had never shared before. And, and when they went around the group and people shared at that level, he then took the risk and shared. And, and that's something that, that honesty begets honesty, doesn't it? Yeah, that, it really does. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And also it, it, it does in, in a, in a group setting too. Like oh, uh, you mentioned yeah. the thing of group. I mean, you, you do get that off of another person who is, uh, you know, is, has really stuck his neck out and was honest about That's it. That's right. That's right. I've always described myself as I'm the second guy in the group to get honest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I might be right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it begets it. it. It just sucks it out of you. you know? Oh, yeah. And it's, and it's and, I mean, it's, it's, and it's contagious because it's contagious. honesty, again, it's, as we were saying, it's an attribute. I mean, it, it means that it's, it's a life. It's a right. living thing. Like, you can have a relationship. With it. I mean, not only can you have a relationship with this thing, there is no way not to have a relationship with this thing That's your right. relationship is is either good or ill but you must you are forced into having a relationship with this thing i had no i just didn't i didn't know until i got into into the program right. i had no idea i didn't know i had i had to have you know that there was a, that the relationship even existed i just thought you know i told lies if i if i did it uh intentionally with a good reason then it wasn't really a lie you know That's and that was that was the extent of what i thought about it and, and now your whole yeah now your life is now your life's hanging in the balance and everything's right. hanging on it and, and so to get back to the 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 theme of this chapter is is you will not get to god through your head but you will you will approach him through the truth because god is yeah. truth yeah, and, yeah, and absolutely. that starts to be, become real. Second question, he says, is, am I serious? Are you really earnest? Are you sincere? Do you really need to get the answers about God? Or are you just making talk? So we, we yeah. kind of looked at that one. Uh, it's the desperation level. It's how, how we're approaching this thing, you know. Um, That's where the addict... That's what the addict is, is so lucky because as you were saying, the sword is hanging over the head. Right. Right. Yeah. And then the next question is, am I willing to learn? Am I open-minded? And, and he says, beware of opinions. Beware of opinions. So many meetings that I've gone to where people are, they pick a subject and then people are going to share their opinions about it. You know, as I, I have gone, as I've gotten deeper in, in, into real recovery, I'm not really interested in anybody's opinions, including my own. Yeah. <laughs> and I think when I got to including my own, I was making a little bit of progress, you know, that, that's not where it's at, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also when you are, when you're aware of your condition, and your need and how great it is you you know that efficiency is is essential like you can't fart around with secondary things you can't fart around with opinions i mean you need help and you need it desperately and you need it bad you know and uh 
Yeah. I think it's just when we fall into the thing of being a, a do all writer, it's, it's, we're more inclined to fall into the trap of, you know, opinions and secondary stuff. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the next one he talks about, he says, am I willing to work hard? Um, yeah, there's, there's the rub. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Or am I, am I just going to sit around and, and bitch and moan, you know? Or am I willing to roll up my sleeves and work hard? Uh, yeah. And this one, this one is actually, I mean, you know, to be honest, I, I remember when I first got in the program, I could not wait till I was quote unquote sober and I could start to give lectures and sp have sponsees, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was looking to get to the place where I, you know, I could, I didn't have to work anymore and mm. this isn't that kind of thing i mean in in the least i mean in, in one sense you're talking about your life and so on and so forth but when when it's when you're dealing with the spiritual life you're talking about something of the greatest magnitude you know uh one's own spiritual destiny and your soul you know this isn't something that you fart around with right. you know <laughs> That's so right. easy to That's forget. Right. Yeah. And how, how long have you been in recovery, Matt? What, what do you got? Uh, since 1999. I think it's 22 years. 22, and I'm coming into 49. Uh, and, and you know, if, if you are working hard at this thing, uh, don't you still feel kind of like a beginner? Yeah, all the time I do. All the time. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, the, uh, really, the longer I'm in, the more I feel that way. I really do. And I used to hear people say that, and I always thought, oh, yeah, right. No, you it's know, true. It really is true. It's true. Uh, um, and, and, and I want to want to talk about this another little quote I wanted to work in here. Because this, in this section of the chapter, he, he labels it knowledge about God's reality is very hard and very easy. And maybe this is what we're talking about right now. He says, there is no way around this paradox. The way is very easy and it is very hard. The logical mind wants to know which is true. The answer is that both are true, equally true, deeply true, and that there is no contradiction. Can this be? Yes, it can. One of the first bits of knowledge that our hard work will win for us is this, that while the logical mind has a very high place in the quest, it has not by any means the highest place. Transcendental wisdom, even the kind we encounter in spiritual nursery school, comes from a level at which the logical mind can only stutter and blink. So then he says, yeah. basically, welcome to spiritual kindergarten. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I mean, I think the same thing, you know, applies to the program all, all, all the time. We quote the big book saying uh, that, that there's no easier, softer way. The implication is the program is the easier, softer way. That's right. And, and yet at the same time, everybody knows that this is the thing that that you give everything towards i mean this 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 is your work you know this is where it, this is this is effort and this is right. not easy you know right yeah and i think this chapter kind of uh i mean he doesn't exactly take us through the steps but but the steps weave their way through his writing uh in, in, yeah. in this book and and this is inventory to me at least that was what was coming to my mind. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. Right, facing the truth, you know, uh, digging, digging in, take, taking off the mask, and uh, man, it was challenging, scary as hell, scary. And as also hell. trying to 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 keep realization of need alive. Yeah. You know, it's like an infant. You know, you you might. Uh, leave it alone for a little while, but you need to be aware of where it is 
and, and what its needs are. You know, if you neglect realization of need, you know, for a day or two, uh, it could die, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, that oh, yeah. if you don't if you don't have realization of need, then all this is just going to peter out. It's, it's of no value to you. You know, that's right. It's, it's a lot of talk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it all goes back to step one. It really does. You know, <laughs> it's a reality or it's not, you know. Uh, and sometimes it's not. I mean, my life is looking manageable and I'm taking the wheel and uh, I'm heading for destruction. You know, eventually, uh, I, mean, I may not get drunk but I'm sure going to start to feel that restless, irritable, discontent stuff. And that's an indicator. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, feel badly about that. I don't, uh, you know, I think there's some uh, tendency in the program to think, Oh my God, I'm feeling restless, irritable, and discontent. Well, good. The little alarm is going off, you know, it's, it's, it's a warning that you're, that you're veering away from the way. Yep. And you just need to get back on course. We're all going to veer. Uh, yeah. You, yep. That's you right. Can't not, uh, but you can catch it early, is what Frank Bookman used to say. Catch it upstream. If yes. You're, if you let it go down too far, it comes a point where where you're gone. Yeah, that's right. You're taken yeah. up by it. I used to have a, a, a old friend in the program. He's talking about uh, the concept of of life unmanageability. He said, mm-hmm. when I first got in the program. Uh, I had very little to be unmanageable about. I had no friends. My family never talked to me. I didn't have a job. <laughs> right. right. My life did not consist of, of very much that was that that unmanageability could be threatened by. Uh, but he said, you know, the longer I got in, I got married, had a wife, kids, a job. Your as as your life increases in that way, the 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 possibility of unmanageability increases with it. You know? That's right. That's right. And then you sit there, like he said, and you watch the dribbling drunk come in, and you know that he's ahead of you in the race. <laughs> in yes, yeah. you know? yeah. he's got yeah. it much more than you do at that moment. Yeah, that's right. And often, you know, uh, it's 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 the case of the undefended human heart. You know, you're yeah. dealing with somebody who's really stripped down in an ego sense very yeah. often yeah yeah when i was doing therapy uh that that was my gift was watching people come in you know that was the reminder this is this is me coming at me again yeah in different shapes and forms yep mm-hmm. what a and i think and i think this thing that that wilson used to call um the language of the heart i think right. what, that's what this language is mm-hmm. because I, and and maybe this is a, a, a heretical twelve step thing to say. Oh, good, but, good. <laughs> Go right ahead. Right, right place to say it. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I I have had so many uh, exchanges with people who were not in the twelve steps, who are not addicts, but had had some really serious life crises, like uh, you know, family members dying or kids that right. you know, or whatever, whatever, yeah, you know, cancers or. And 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 coming out of that level of suffering, and this thing that that again that Wilson calls the the language of the heart. You you can talk to people who have had suffering like that. It is I if you could, you know, it's like first step ease. I don't know what you'd call it, you know, but it's like all of a sudden there is this connection. You know, you're speaking the same thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Sometimes people in twelve step we get so proud of our stories. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy it's crazy it's like let me outdo you in my unmanageability i mean yeah. how far from the truth can <laughs> we can we stray <laughs> so yeah uh, well listen matt this is this has been uh wonderful uh as usual and uh what we're going to do next time invite folks back we're going to here's what we're going to tackle is is uh in this next chapter tom talks about in this, on this road to recovery, how do we find the right people? And how do we find the right books? And that's something that really, I think, gets left out a lot in 12-step uh, recovery. Uh, 
but finding those right books. And then he asked, where exactly is the laboratory for finding God? So I, I think that'll be uh, another uh, interesting session that uh, I'm going to look forward to. So Matt, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time uh, to share with us today and look forward to going uh, still deeper in the episodes ahead. And I want to thank all of you. Yeah, I want to thank you folks out there for listening and I hope uh, some of this material has been helpful for you in your own recovery. And I uh, hope you'll come back and join us again next time. And uh, meanwhile, t tell a few friends about the podcast, invite them to uh, listen in. And uh, meanwhile, stay sober and keep coming back. Uh, God bless.